Next up, Ralph Terry. Larned, Kansas, baby. Pitched in the big leagues for 12 years. Won 107 games, 48 of them complete. 1961, he won 16 and lost three. Next year, 23 and 12. Won two games in the 1962 World Series for the Yankees and was named MVP of the World Series. One of those wins came in the seventh game, pitching just a four hit, complete game effort. After baseball, a professional golfer, lifetime member of the PGA of America, played in four PGA events. Then, as a veteran, played in only 102 senior PGA tournaments, and he'll still sandbag you to death and take your money on the golf course. <laughs> Don't believe him, he's not a six, he's closer to about a one. Bill Mazeroski did call before this uh, event and wanted to thank me, Ralph, or you personally, for getting him into the Baseball Hall of Fame. <laughs> But we're darned happy to have you here in the state of Kansas as the newest member of the Kansas Sports Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Ralph Terry. State uh, and uh, my daughter-in-law Lisa and and uh, Corbin and Olivia, my grandchildren. Uh, I, uh, you know, I wasn't, you know, the writers and the media they tend to romanticize that era. It was hard work. <laughs> you know, you can't stop to smell the roses. You know with you beat Boston, and then, and then you got to go to Cleveland, and then Detroit, and then Chicago. And, I mean, they're waiting for you, and, uh, and uh, they're freezing the balls in uh, Chicago, so they, they wouldn't go anywhere and uh, kind of neutralize our power hitters. And Mickey Mantle, he, he uh, used to say, uh, if we'd had a good pitching staff, he'd have lasted another five years. <laughs> and, uh, he roomed with Billy Martin, you know, and uh, Billy said, uh, well, hell, if I'd had a different roomie, I'd, I'd still be playing. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, I first came to Kansas in uh, 1952. Uh, I.T. Mud Hawker was the postmaster at Baxter Springs, and he was president of the Baxter Springs Whiz Kids. And, uh, I was 16, and he said, would you like to come try out for the Whiz Kids? So I went up there, on a, took a bus, and, uh, and <clears throat> Barney Barnett was the manager, old Barney Sr. and minor, Lynn Zick minor, and his son, Barney Barnett Jr., was 6'6", six six, and he, he pitched minor league ball and uh, played for the Chicago Cardinals football, and, uh, and he was a black paratrooper uh, in World War II, and he was on uh, the, the Normandy, and uh, so we were saying, well, show us some uh, special judo holes and stuff, you know, your commanders are, are like Green Beret or something. And he threw me down and uh, I hit the roots of all those old oak trees there in you know, southeast Kansas and cracked two ribs. Well, he kept me on the team. And years later, I said, the only reason you kept me was because you hurt me. <laughs> Showed me some wrestling moves. But, uh, I played for the Whiz Kids, and uh, 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 my friend uh, Gene Bicknell over there, he worked at a, a um, CNS or Bird's Drive, they had a little drive-in, we used to eat there all the time, and he was a, a poor boy from Riverton, Kansas, <laughs> Baxter Spring, and uh, Mickey Mantle had played there four years earlier, and we had the same coaches, and, and uh, that, was, that was really special. The next year, I uh, played for Independence, uh, in the Van Johnson League, Southeastern Kansas Van Johnson League. And then fast forward, uh, I signed with the Yankees and uh, 
Hey, you know, the amazing thing, uh, the scout that signed me, Tom Greenway, who was a great scout from uh, Willard, Missouri, and Tom signed uh, Mickey Mantle for $1,100 in the back seat of a Cadillac at midnight one night. You know, it's funny, uh, those guys used to brag about how cheap they got us, you know, <laughs> and they'd get bonuses when they, uh, you know, the team, they did good and everything. Well, it's a lot different now. Uh, we needed the money in those days. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, to me, my highlights, I lost the seventh game, and uh, that gave me some humility, and, uh, and uh, uh, then I won a seventh game. And uh, it was, the great part was, was uh, playing for Casey Stengel, and playing with those great, great teammates, uh, Mickey and Yogi and Roger. And, uh, you know, uh, Yogi was, uh, quite funny, but he was all serious on the ball field. I had to face the load one time, uh, we were playing Washington, and Yogi comes out to the mound and he said, how are you going to pitch to this guy? And I thought I'd make a joke, you know, I heard Yogi's sense of humor, and he said, oh, 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 this ain't no time for jokes. You got the bases loaded. He said, there ain't extra infielders out there. <laughs> Yogi. Yogi was dead serious. And, uh, you know, they asked Yogi about this uh, switch hitter one day. What do you think about that guy? And he said, hey, that guy's amphibious. <laughs> Yogi, you know, Yogi was going to all these funerals lately. His wife Carmen said, Yogi, how come you're going to all these funerals? He says, well, if you don't go to there, they won't go to yours. <laughs> try to steal a sports page, you know, in the morning, you know. And we used to take trains in those days. And uh, God, it always seemed like, you know, they were square wheelers. We called them Jesse James trains, you know. Whack, whack, whack. We're going to Baltimore and Washington up to Boston. Then it wasn't bad, you know, the overnight sleepers to Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago. It seemed like we are always pulling through Wheeling, West Virginia at 4 o'clock in the morning. And it, <laughs> we would get off and get the morning paper and and uh, get the box scores and see who got three for four or homer and a double or what hot, hot hitters we're, we're running into. That's our scouting report. Uh, <laughs> but uh, then, you know, to, to play for, uh, for, oh yeah, we had these two scouts, uh, Johnny Noon and, and uh, I forget the other guy's name, and, and they'd come in with briefcases and they would, they would scout these other teams and how are you going to pitch to them? And they'd say, well, so-and-so, you got to pitch him high and tight. And the other guy would say, well, you got a curve him low and away. So, and they, every pitch, everybody's the same. Right? So we nicknamed him, here comes high and tight and low and away. <laughs> you know, I love it. Uh, you know, baseball is the kind of game that anything you get away with, you know, they, it, it's kind of a grand old tradition of the game. You know, they cheat on a double play, they get on first base real quick for the runner, they, take, they try to hit the out. And, now, uh, this uh, umpire came out of the mound one day and he said to the uh, pitcher, he said, uh, you use a foreign substance on that ball. He said, no, I got that right down here in Valdosta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a lot of fun. You know, Billy Martin, he was a real agitator. We'd be leaving Boston by 10 games in the middle of September, it's all over. Ted Williams would ground out, round first, run back in front of our dugout. Billy Martin would be up on the steps and he'd say, yeah, I'd like to go trout fishing and deer hunting this fall too, but I've got to play in that damn classic again. <laughs> Ted Williams would say, go to hell, you little bastard. <laughs> and you know how to play for, play for Casey Stengel. You know, I just got to use this line. I love the movie Blade Runner. Rutger Hauer was a dying android, and he said, the things I have seen, I have seen warships on fire in the rings of Orion. And that's what I've seen when I played. And to play for Casey Stengel, and, and have Casey get on the dugout steps in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, and say, come on, let's go, put something on it, this is it. And I just wanted to show the old faster than I could do it. And he really knew how to push your button, you know. And he, he, he never called anybody by their first name except Yogi and Hank. The only two guys I ever heard of. And it was always Manjo, Vera, 
Ford, Mantle. Somebody said, what do you call you? He said, hey, you, get your finger bent and get out there and warm up. <laughs> but those are special, special kind. Of, uh, I lost the World Series. And, at, and I remember Mike Ditka last year, we were playing in a charity golf tournament in Chicago. And he said, Ralph, I was, a, I was in high school in Pittsburgh when uh, man hit that home run. And he was telling me about it. I said, uh, Mike, have you ever tried to get drunk and you couldn't? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, I said, well, that was it. You know, we, we were sober as a judge. You know, we couldn't, me and the catcher, John Blanchard, we couldn't get out. Then, uh, so, uh, 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 I know I've only got six minutes here. <laughs> But, you know, you know, guys, uh, we worked our ass off for years and years, you know, and, uh, and there's so many, and, uh, uh, you know, we could be up here all day telling these kind of stories. But I was playing in, uh, in a golf tournament in uh, Penina, Portugal. Henry Cotton was the director of golf, and we had a pro-am, and he paired me with uh, an Englishman who owned a couple of steel companies, a rich, little obnoxious, loud-mouthed Englishman. And we were playing with one ball, and uh, it was cold and rainy. In the other hole, they had, uh, they had free wine for the golfers, and it was real strong port. And so the sixth hole, we're one under. We're alternating this one ball. So we're having a port, and uh, WDP says, well, I say they tell me you played a bit of rounders. And uh, that's a sissy game in England. I said, yes, yes. He said, well, I've seen one game in my life, I said, well, bring it on, WDP, let's hear it. <laughs> he says, in 1960, we were in Pittsburgh. Oh. And I said, I'm looking around, and somebody's putting them up to it. And there's nobody there, you know. We played with a couple of Swedish uh, pros. They were big guys, and, and he was giving them hell. He said, uh, the Swedes capitulated, and we're going to let Hitler in. And uh, he was giving them hell. And I thought, WDP, these guys are big guys. They'll beat up on us. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I said, he proceeds to tell me, I thought maybe he saw a game in July. Well, he says, we played our 18 in the morning at Oakmont, and our host, U.S. Steel, said, we must make haste. We're going to see one of America's classics, the seventh game of the World Series. No kidding. <laughs> I didn't say anything, you know, I got to hear He says, Sports Field, I believe it was. We arrived there, and the place was absolutely mobbed. And in the final chucker, this bloke hit it clean out of the lot. <laughs> Sheer pandemonium broke loose. We were lucky to escape with our lives. <laughs> you know, WDP, somebody had to bowl it up there to that guy. He said, yes, yes. That was me. I threw the pitch. <laughs> oh, what a coincidence. More pork than me. <laughs> Another story, another story. Uh, in 1954, I was playing for Binghamton in the Eastern Bank. And it was an off day on Monday. And it was only about an hour's ride from Cooperstown. So the Yankees happened to be playing uh, Cincinnati, raising money for the museum. And it was crowded. And I got in there with the dugout. And uh, Jim Turner, the pitching coach, spotted me. And he said, uh, let that kid in. You know, it's an exhibition game. He can sit on the bench. But, uh, he says, uh, Ralph, sit down here with those three old timers, you know? So I, I'd sit down there, and there was a couple on my left, the corner, the other guy. And uh, the second inning, I turned, to, I turned to the guy on the right, and I said, hi, Ralph Terry's my name. I'm a pitcher, Binghamton, class A. And he said, well, hi, Ralph, Cy Young's my name. <laughs> Uh, he says, shake hands with Zach Weed and Ty Cobb. <laughs> uh, I thought about that talk. You know? I bet they laughed their ass off. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Thank you.